Okay, so this is finding areas by integration. So if you look at this diagram, when you integrate your function, whatever it is, f of x, then what you will calculate is the area between that function, whatever the graph is, and the x-axis. And then if you have limits, the limits that you put into the definite integral will give you then the area between those two values on the x-axis. Okay, so what you're calculating is the area under the function between the function and the x-axis, where your limits are a and b, you'll sub those values in for your definite integral. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, so let's take this as our example. We can see that the function is x squared plus 1. That's what we're going to integrate, and we're going to do it between 0 and 2, and that's going to give us this area between the function and the x-axis. So we are going to integrate the function between 0 and 2. The function is x squared plus 1, and we're going to integrate it with respect to x. So this is basically our calculation for that area. So as your process is with integration, you are going to add 1 onto the power, divide by that new power. And of course, 1 integrates to x. And we are going to use our limits 0 to 2. And so when you sub in your limits, as you know, you take the higher one first, sub it in, and subtract your lower one. Sub it in, and then you are going to calculate. So what we are left with then is, and that gives us 8 over 3 plus 2 minus 0. Just be careful with your calculator work here. If you're doing it on the calculator, do it maybe bit by bit if it's one bracket at a time. But do practice it because a lot of pupils fall down in the actual calculation. And so we end up with 4 and 2 thirds square units. So the other important thing to note now when we're calculating the area is this. Every time you integrate your function, it is always going to give you the area between that function and the x-axis. However, when it goes below the x-axis, what you will find is that calculation there will turn out to be negative. But if it is above the x-axis, your calculation will work out to be positive. Okay, so what we need to be careful here of, obviously area can't be negative, so we take its absolute value we take the positive value obviously if you whatever you get say if that's minus 16 you'll take it to be a positive 16 area obviously can't be negative but you will when you integrate and put in your limits end up with a minus 16 answer so this is why if you have a function that goes above and below the x-axis you cannot do it in its entirety from this limit to this limit what you're going to have to do is break it up go from here to here and calculate that area first, that will give you a positive value, and then go from this limit to this, and this section will give you a negative value, but we will take the positive value of it, and then adding the two areas together will give me the total for the answer. Okay, so let's try this question here. Again, you pause the video and try it yourself first. And then you can replay the video and I will work through it then slowly. And you can see if you got it right or where exactly you may have gone wrong. So again, watch out for the fact that we have areas above and below the x-axis here. So we're going to do it in two separate calculations. And bear in mind then to take the positive value of this area here. Okay. So we are integrating the function. Uh, from 0 to 2 first, and the function is x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x. When we integrate this, we add 1 onto the power, divide by the new power, 6x, add 1 onto the power, divide by the new power, and 8x, add on 1 onto the power, divide by the new power, and we are putting in the limits 0 to 2. Okay, 
So that works out to be subbing in the two first. And then the zero. We end up with four minus 16 plus 16 and minus zero. So that works out to be four. So that is the answer for the area of the first part above the x-axis. So now we're gonna do the second part between two and four. And again, it is the same function, same curve, x cubed minus six x squared plus eight x. And I integrate that as I did before. And I'm going to sub in my limits 2 and 4. Okay, so continuing that on and subbing in my 4 first. And then my 2. And what I end up with is 64 minus 128 plus 64 minus 4 minus 16 plus 16. Check all those calculations that you're getting the same answers as well. And that then all simplifies to 4. So we're getting 4 for the first part and four for the area, actually, sorry, it simplifies to minus four, but of course we take the positive value four. When you do that calculation, you end up with a minus four. We take the absolute value of it. So four is actually what we're taking as the area. And now the two areas together is four plus four, which is eight square units. Okay, next thing I want to show you is the fact that sometimes you may be asked for uh, the area between the function and the y-axis, okay? Now, for us to be able to calculate this, what you're going to have is your function in terms of y, and you will integrate it with respect to y. So the only difference is where we were used to dealing with it all in terms of x and integrating with respect to x, this time, your function will be all in terms of y and will integrate with respect to y in the same way, same process, but it's just with the y variable. So when we calculate that, when we do our integration, we put in our limits as before. This time, it's going to give us the area between that function or curve and the y-axis. And likewise, we need to know that same thing will happen here if it is going to the left of the y-axis or the right of the axis the y-axis, you will have obviously a negative result with any calculation going to the left and you will have a positive result when you calculate your or, and integrate your with your limits of anything to the right of the y-axis. So bear in mind again you would have to do that kind of a calculation separately and always take the positive value for the area here. Let's try a question. Okay, so here we are, we're asked to calculate this shaded area here. So obviously it is between the function and the y-axis. It's to the right, so it should give us a positive value, so we don't need to worry about um, having to take a positive value here. It will give us a positive value when we do our calculation. And you can see that function is all in terms of y, so it's nine minus y squared is what we're going to integrate here. Okay, so again, pause the video wherever you feel you're able to continue on yourself, and then you can replay and check that you got it right. This is what we're trying to calculate. There's one clear thing missing here that we would have had before in questions, and that is what the limits are. Well, is that something we can work out? 
For example, we need to know where this function or curve is cutting the y-axis because where it cuts the y-axis is going to give me the value here and the limit value that I need up here. So how do you calculate where a function cuts the y-axis? If you remember, if it cuts the y-axis, what do we know? We know x is equal to 0. So that's the first thing you're going to have to work out. Put in x is equal to 0 and solve for your y values. You'll get two y values and that is where that function cuts the y-axis. Once you've got your limits then, integrate. So we want to see where it cuts the y-axis, so therefore x is equal to 0. So when we sub in 0, we end up with this and we need to solve this. So in order to solve, of course, I've got a quadratic here. I have two options. I can factorize to solve or use the minus b formula to solve. I'm going to factorize to solve. I can spot my factorizing method. It's not my normal trinomial quadratic set up here. It is the difference of two squares. So when I factorize it, I'm going to get 3 minus y and 3 plus y. And if you did go down the road of ending up with uh, y squared is equal to 9, just be very careful. You should always know that with a squared, you need to be getting two solutions, so don't forget it's plus or minus the square root of 9 then is your value. So plus or minus 3, which is what I'm going to get here when I do 3 minus y is equal to 0, or 3 plus y is equal to 0, 3 is therefore equal to y, or y is equal to minus 3. Okay, so there's your two values. So there are my limits. I'm going from minus 3 up to 3 on the y-axis. So let's do that then and I'm integrating the function with respect to y. That's the only big difference there. Okay. So integrating nine, I'm gonna get nine y, and integrating y squared, add one onto the power, divide by the new power. And then my limits are from minus three to three. Okay, so I'm going to sub in my limits. So subbing in 3 first. And then minus 3. What I get is 27 minus 9. Minus 27 plus 9, which is 18. And then minus minus 18 which is 36 square units. Okay, and so this brings us on to our last aspect we need to cover when we are being asked to calculate area using integration. And that is this type of question here, where you have the area between two curves or two functions. Okay, any area in between two functions, here's what we're going to do. Well, if you consider the g of x function first, which is that one here, uh, between your limits a and b for toxic, then if we integrate that, what we're going to get is the area, all of this area here, underneath that curve, g of x. And then if you subtract the area underneath the function f of x, so this area here, then you're going to be left with the shade a bit in between. So consider that again. If you consider the area under the g of x function, so all of that, and subtract the area under the f of x function, all of this, just the white bit there between the limits a and b, then what you will be left with is the area in between. So that's how we tackle area between two functions. We calculate the area underneath the higher function first between the limits and subtract the area underneath the lower function second between the two limits. Okay, so let's try a question. Okay, so here's this question. What we're given in this question is that the curve is the function y equals x squared and the line is the function y equals 2x. 
Okay, so I'll repeat that. The curve is the function y is equal to x squared, and the line is the function y is equal to 2x. So that's all we're given in this question, and we're asked to find that shaded area. Okay, again, pause the video where you feel you're comfortable enough to continue on working yourself. Otherwise, let it play on a little bit and pause again whenever you feel you can finish off the rest of the question yourself. So, straight away, a little bit like the last question that we did together, we don't have clear limits. Well, we do have it obviously cutting uh, the point zero zero, but we don't know this point P. So we're going to have to find what P is. I don't know what that limit is from the graph. I just know that this quarter point here and this quarter point here are where the curve and the line intersect. So remembering from your quarter geometry of the line uh, chapter, how will I figure out where these two functions intersect? What can I do to find out where these two intersect? And of course, in order to do that, we'll have to do simultaneous equations. Once you know your limits then, remember how we get the area in between. Get the area under the higher function first, which is obviously the line, and we'll subtract the area under the lower function second, which is obviously the curve, and subtract. So, as I said, we have the curve, y is equal to x squared, and we have the line, y is equal to 2x. And I need to see where these two intersect. So it's simultaneous equations. But one is linear and one is nonlinear. So your only option and method with a linear and nonlinear is substitution. So we have this set up to do this quite nicely. Obviously, as y is equal to x squared, I can sub that straight away in for the y here. So I end up with x squared is equal to 2x. And I want to solve for this. So solving for this, if I bring the minus 2x over, I do have a type of quadratic. Again, your approach with quadratics for solving is either factorized to solve or minus b formula. It's not your normal trinomial type factorizing. So when I look to factorize x squared minus 2x, my only option is to pull out the common term. And when I do that, I have two things multiplied to equal zero, which implies that either x is equal to zero or x minus two is equal to zero. So in other words, x is equal to two. So obviously I knew already that it was cutting at x is equal to zero. I could see that from the diagram, but the other value then is x is equal to two. Okay, so that's the only value I need in for my integration. But if it had asked me for the full coordinate point, of that p, I would still need the y coordinate. And so if I did need the corresponding coordinate y for the full coordinate of p, I would take 2 and sum it back into one of these and I would get the corresponding y value. Since I don't need it for the area that I've been asked for here, the area of the shaded region, I'm just going to take my limits 0 and 2 and I'm good to go. So I'm going to integrate from zero to two, the higher function is the line, so it's two x that I'm gonna integrate first, and then I'm gonna subtract the lower function, which is the curve, so x squared dx. And I'm going to go ahead and integrate those now with those limits. So two x integrated, add one onto the power and divide by that new power, that will cancel. I'm gonna sub in zero and two, and then for x squared, it is going to be add one onto the power, divide by the new power, and sub in the limits zero and two. Okay, so continuing on with that then, subbing in, I get two squared minus zero squared, and I get two cubed over three minus zero cubed over three. That works out to be 4 minus 0. This works out to be 8 over 3 minus 0. And together then, that works out to be 1 and 1 third square units. Okay. 